Hey, I'm trying to find my other um, thing to hold up my my phone because this one is not doing very well holding it up. So <laughs> I'm looking for my tool to hold up my phone. So <laughs> excuse me a minute while I panic. <laughs> okay, I know it's here somewhere. This might work. I got three holder uppers. Uh, it's not so good. Mm. I just have to have the water up there. Oh, it's so cool. <laughs> Okay. Let's see, maybe my painting stuff will allow me to hold up. <laughs> hold it up. Okay. Let's see how that works. <laughs> okay. I'm low on battery juice and so I'm trying to find a way to hold up the cord. There, I think I got it. Okay. <laughs> Doesn't look the way I want it to, but let's see if we can prop this up a little bit. Uh, okay. Today, I want to share something that's been on my mind for a while. It actually is from chapter two of my newest book, which is uh, this book here, The Tree of Life. Okay, so do you know what you are hearing in most churches is not the gospel? The gospel means good news. And so what we've come to believe is that getting old, sickness, disease, poverty, lack, and fear, and all those things are normal, and they are not. So I'm going to share with you from Chapter 2 of my book, um, The Tree of Life, on the gospel of life. So everything, there are many things in the gospel that are preached today in our churches that keep a Christian in victim mentality. Instead of going over what's wrong, I'm going to challenge you to see the good news. Excuse me. So I'm going to try to keep it simple, and I'm going to start. I'm going to just do um, like one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on, and in invite you to do some research on this. So first of all, let's start with the, start with the beginning. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil was in the garden, and the fruit of the tree was death. So Genesis two seventeen says, but but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat, for in the day you eat of it, you will surely die, which they did. In other words, they were not going to die. They were going to live forever, and then they were going to die. So they ate from the trees, so they died. You don't see Adam and Eve around because they died. The seed is after its kind. It produces fruit after its kind. It was a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And by the way, that's my swing back there. If you see that swinging behind my head, that's what it is. It's my swing. Um, okay, so the seed is after its kind, and it produced the fruit of death. So Adam and Eve um, gave their ownership over to the person who distorted that tree to make it a tree of, of uh, knowledge of good and evil, a tree of death. Okay, so Satan became the ruler and the god of this earth. And then we're going to go over how we got it back. But the seed is after its own kind. It produces its fruit. In Genesis 1, 11, the fruit tree... That yields fruit according to his kind whose seed was in itself was on that was on the earth that was god's purpose when he created trees was for the fruit and seeds to produce a harvest okay so this brought death to the world through adam and eve and all their offspring one person sinned and brought death to all people everyone born after adam and eve's eyes were open due to the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil okay they knew what good and evil was genesis 1 1 and genesis 2 17. Now, the death cycle starts right here, and this is life-changing revelation. I mean, this has changed my life. This and communion, like God told me about communion in my book, my other book. So, the death cycle of knowledge made people aware that they sinned, they were guilty, and death was the punishment. Okay, so read the book of Romans that talks all about it. The church is stuck right here. Here's the problem. The church is stuck right here in the death cycle without power and it focuses on sin 
instead of the church focusing on what the blood and body of Jesus did and how he gave us life, they're focusing on sin consciousness and death. And later on in the book, I go over what that means and why grace is so important. Okay, so now we have a death cycle going on. Everyone on earth is a sinner and everyone on earth is under the death cycle because the wages of sin is death. So the law came into play and the, the law was in their head, in their heart, before God gave um, the law. So the law gives the accuser, any kind of rule, gives the accuser of the right to accuse us, to take us to court and to accuse us. And when we're accused of sin, that means that the result is death in any form, whether it's sickness, disease, poverty, lack, or fear, whatever. Okay? So that's what the accuser uses to condemn us to sick sickness. And this is where the church is stuck. They're giving you condemnation, shame, guilt, um, and punishment. And the church keeps us in that place where we have a victim mentality, where the only thing that can help us is, is following rules of the church. And each church has different rules. So if you keep changing churches, you're going to find out there's different rules in different churches that you sin and are not able to keep up. Okay, so this is where the church is at. The church is at, you sin, you're guilty, and that opens the door for the enemy to come. Okay, but God, cre God created a replacement for, a, for our death. He created a sacrifice for the Jews, which was a dove, a calf, or um, a, a goat, not a goat, a sheep. Oh, I got to make a correction here. I say a goat, it should be a sheep. Okay, sacrifice, it, it covered our sins, but it did not take away our sins and it did not take away our guilty conscience which it goes over in in romans so next thing the sacrifice took away the penalty of our sin and the penalty of sin is death in any form which comes through the devil sickness disease poverty lack field uh, and fear kill steal destroy divorces failure in businesses failure in ma management accidents aging um, it didn't clean our heart of guilt. And when our heart is guilty, we, we, we are causing ourselves to be punished by ourselves. Our, but, you know, guilty conscience makes people have heart attacks. And, and all our emotions also cause these things in us, which is a part of the death cycle. So when our heart is guilty, even though the punishment for the sin was uh, paid for by the sacrifice of Jesus, Jesus which we pay, we place the Jewish sacrificial system, um, we have a hard time believing God loves us and receiving from God. And this is another place the church is stuck at. Come up to the altar today. Repent of your sins. You're a sinner. Okay, when we focus on that, we are taking away the power of the blood. You see, when we know how much Jesus, what Jesus did for us, he changed our identity by changing us and making us into a new creature. When we focus on the new creature we are, the power he has given us, the love that he has for us, then our behavior changes. And that's where a lot of churches are just religious churches, man's rules, which change with opinions, with churches, with um, with. Uh, nationalities with geographic uh, areas okay um for example if you preach in a church in the united states barefoot they would think you are a sinner and crazy and weird but if you preach in another country with shoes on they would think that you were a sinner and that you were evil and that you were bad and, and all this stuff so every church you go to is going to have different set of rules according to the religion and their denomination <laughs> so it all comes down to jesus and what he did for us and who we are in him okay so um jesus okay we have um we do not believe the love god has for us or that we're good enough to receive and this book will change your whole conception of receiving from god i guarantee you oh my word and if you cannot afford to buy this book please text me facebook message me and i will give you a free copy of this pdf of the, a pdf of this book and my book on communion because i believe so strongly that now in this time in the world that we're going through right now, what we're going to go through, that you need this book. It will change you. It, you will be able to do all kinds of stuff through the power of God. Okay, so, uh, and I'm just going over these different steps. Um, even though the sacrifice, okay, even though the sacrifice of Jesus paid for a penalty of death, 
uh, of sin by death, the sacrifice of the animals was not good enough to cleanse our conscience and take us out of the death cycle. Okay, it closed our eyes. Our, our eyes were open to see good and evil, bad, wrong, and right. So the death cycle was from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which followed the bloodline, okay? Everyone born out after Adam and Eve were born into the death cycle as a sinner, and the wages of sin is death. And the punishment was of breaking the law was in any form was death in any form. This allowed the accuser to accuse us of breaking the law, which, which was punishable by death. That's why there's sickness, disease, poverty, lack, fear, tornadoes, hurricane, hur hurricanes, except for HARP, which controls our weather, which we're going through weather warfare right now, and a different information warfare right now. So anyway, a lot of that stuff does not just come from the devil directly, but comes through people who are manipulated by the devil, controlling some of the weather. Okay, because the law made us aware that we broke the law, our conscience would bring about any form of death because we were punishing sin. And so with the enemy, with a sin conscience, we could not believe to receive from God. Jesus came in love, being the perfect sacrifice, and cleansed our conscience. And um, I don't have the scripture down there, but it's probably in Romans. Jesus' blood made us new creatures, which means we have a new bloodline, a, a new history, a new line we were no longer in the line of sin and death. We were no longer under the bloodline of death. We were no longer uh, punishable. Uh, when Jesus nailed to the cross and made an open spectacle of them, he took away their right to punish us by taking away those laws. Okay, when he took away those laws, and there's scriptures, and again, I believe it's in Romans or Ephesians or Colossians, probably Romans, uh, that talks about this. Um, but when he, he took that away, there is legally no reason, no matter what, there is legally no reason that you should have sickness, disease, poverty, lack, fear, death of any form. That includes aging, which is really, really exciting. But so he took away the thing that the enemy was using to say, hey, you broke the law. Now you are punishable by death. Okay, he took that away. When he died on the cross, he made he made us perfect so that he so perfect that he came to live inside of us. There's nothing more needed to make us more perfect. We're wholly blameless and above reproach, body, spirit, and soul. Isn't that amazing? Um, so what, and there's two scriptures that tell us that. Now, when, when when we receive Jesus, who paid for our sin and his sin nature. With his blood, he paid for it. We become new creatures. We're born again, and we have the DNA of God through the bloodline of Jesus. So uh, we're no longer under the law. We are now live by the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, not the law of sin and death. The law of sin and death, get this, this is the most important thing I can say to you. The law of sin and death means you sin the punishment is in death by the enemy of any way, shape, or form. But you're a brand new creature. Jesus came to give you life. The tree of knowledge and good and evil. You know it's good and you know it's bad. You make choices. Gave us punishment. Gave us death. The death cycle. So we are no longer under the law of sin and death. But if you do not know that, if you do not contend for what Jesus already paid for you to have, then you will think that sickness, disease, poverty, lack, and fear, and death, and aging is all part of being a human being, and it is not, okay? Jesus came to give us life. The tree of knowledge of good and evil gave us death. Wendy, okay, get that. That's so, so, so important. If you get that revelation, your whole life and world will be excitingly changed. I promise. I guarantee you. Okay, so it's like a court case, okay? We were told not to do something. We broke the law. The court said that punishment is death. The punisher came and produced death. Now, the Jesus came and paid the price of our death by dying for us so that we could have life everlasting forever life not just here not just when we die and go to heaven but here on earth our physical body okay 
the gospel of immortality. I think that's how you say that word. I have a hard time with that word. Okay, so Jesus died and paid the penalty of death for our sin and sent us free from the fear of death and from dying because he gave us life and that more abundantly. So we are no longer under the law of sin and death, but we live by the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus because we're not in the flesh, we're in the spirit. Spirit rules. Okay. And that made our way to heaven, not just when we die, but now we can access heaven. Heaven is our home. Everything that God has given us, everything for life and godliness. He has given us every blessing in heavenly places. We're seated in heavenly places. We're told to seek everything uh, seek uh, seek the, everything that is above, everything that Jesus provided for us. We are told to seek it, okay? We are told to rule and govern on this earth now because we are new creatures with a new bloodline. Death has no place in us. If you ever get a sickness, disease, an injury, or anything, all you have to do is remember you live by the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, not by the law of sin and death, okay? That revelation is so amazing. But if you don't get it now, and I, I, I just... <laughs> break it down and go over it in this book this book is amazing if you cannot afford this book please please let me know and i will send you a pdf copy of it i believe so much that this book is for today this book will change your life and same thing with the communion book i will put the link here where you can go to my website and download it for free you can give it away just don't sell it don't make money off of it if you make money off of it send it to me because i wrote the book but um no you can give it away okay Okay, so that is chapter three. Two, chapter three is the secret lie that's killing you. And I'm going to do another live video on that, but um, I have to do a few more things here. I just, I mean, if you, if you could just get that whole fact that the tree of knowledge of good and evil produced death, and Adam and Eve were supposed to live forever. Our body, scientists has found, was supposed to live forever. That was God's intent. That was how he created us, to live forever, to rule and have dominion on this earth. To rule over death, sickness, disease, poverty, lack, fear, things above the earth. Whether you believe in aliens, I don't. I believe they're demons fallen. Or in the earth, hell, or whatever is down there in the dumbs, in the deep underground military bases. All that stuff. Everything above the earth, on the earth, under the earth. We are to rule and have authority. All the stuff happening in the government. We were created to have dominion. To take, to pull down every seat, every authority, every person that is not following God's will in our city, in our government, and in our country. And to put the people who are righteous because of Jesus, they're righteous. When you're in Jesus, you are righteous, holy, and blameless. Not by your behavior, not by what you do and don't do, but by believing in Jesus because you're in Jesus. You are righteous, holy, and blameless. And so we're supposed to put people in those seats of authority and dominion, taking them down, uh, speaking. it. We do everything by speaking. Okay, so here is my... My other thing that I want to tell you, I am a author. I have written over 50, probably over 60 books by now. Um, but I tell you, if you don't get any of my books, just get the last three. They're called the Warrior Series. And it's the Tree of Life, Communion for Health, Wealth, and Peace, or something like that, and the DNA of God. Um, those three books will change your life, but especially the last two, uh, the Communion and the Tree of Life. I'm going to teach you in each chapter and go over it because God said, if I don't do it, someone else will. And I get revelations every day and so excited. I want to share them with you. So, okay, so I'm an author. So just go to Amazon and type in Robin Bremer. You'll see all my books. Uh, I often have things for sale or free, especially around Christmas, the month of Christmas. I make a lot of things free. But you can get these two books free right now as a PDF file. Okay, so I'm also a publisher. So if you or anyone you know is a Christian author or an author that has a family safe, or Christian book. Um, I publish books for only $399. I know that's absolutely crazy. What I do usually costs about $2,000. And at the very cheapest, $500, but usually around $2,000. So, so check out my website, robinbremer.net. Um, I'm going to try to put links up here in the somewhere. Anyway, and also I'm an, uh, I'm an artist. I have painted several, lots of pictures. I'm going to show you a couple real quick. <laughs> Go away, stay there. I want to show you some of my pictures. Um, my pictures are for sale, and you can think of it as uh, donating into my ministry if you want to, or I hopefully my pictures are good enough that you absolutely love them and want them. This is the latest one that I painted uh, just the other day. 
and uh, I have an Etsy store. You can go to my Etsy store, or uh, I have links there. Um, this one here it says, "I hold you in my heart." This one I'm giving away to the person that shares the most of my videos. I'll give away until after I give this one away. I'll give another one away. I'll always be giving away because I love to give stuff away. This is called a next uh, windmill, and that's a picture of my, of my neighbor's windmill. This is Turkey Creek. This is um, down the street from me that we had to cross, especially monsoon, monsoon season. This is another one. These little ones here are $35. They include shipping and handling. This is you know, just a reflection of the pond. So all these, all these little ones here are, are only $35, including shipping and handling. If you, if you buy them directly from me, if you go to my Etsy store, they're going to probably be a little bit more expensive uh, because um, I have to send them out to people I don't know, and I like to bless my people. This is one of my favorites. I just did this lately. This is um, called Spring Beauty or Spring Into Action, Birch Trees. And then and this is another one. Um, and then I have some big ones here real quick. This one here, this one here. This one says Hope, and this is the Aurora Borealis. I think that's how you say it correctly. And I think all the rest of them are in restaurant. In a, I have a couple in restaurants. I have about 13 in restaurants. And this one here. And right now I'm painting. I'm working on painting another one today. I'll probably paint two or three um, paintings. So anyway, um, you can go to my Etsy store. You can buy copies or prints of them if you don't want the, you don't want the original one, which is my my. They start at. Um, $35 and go up to like $90, the really big ones. You can get a print of them for only $4.99. So anyway, uh, that's my advertisement. If you like this, if you have been blessed by what I'm sharing, please share it with your social media sites. Uh, uh, share it on Facebook Messenger. Share it in your Facebook groups and in your Christian groups. And it's a good way to get people saved because people think that Christianity is about being good and doing good and doing right. But it's not. It's about life. It's about Jesus, the love of a dad, a, a, a God wanting his children, and Jesus wanting a bride. And he made us perfect so that we could be that. So you can get somebody saved by listening to this. Anyway, pick up your free books. I'll put links uh, down below. And I'm also giving away that one painting. So share it. And thank you for blessing me by watching this. And guys, I always pray at the end. So, Father, I just pray. That everybody who watches this, who shares this, that their their eyes would be open or closed, however you want to say it, because their eyes were open. Now we want our eyes closed, so we walk by faith, not by sight. But that they would be blessed with abundant life, that they would understand about life. They would they would get this revelation. They would get this revelation, and that their lives would be changed. They would walk in power and authority because they get the revelation of the tree of life about life and the death cycle. So, Father, I pray that they would get the revelation, that their eyes would be open, that they would be blessed, that they would be blessed financially, that they would have peace during this time. Excuse me. And if everything does go dark for 10 days, the Internet shuts down and so forth, that nobody would freak out, that they would know that the good guys are winning and they would not freak out about it. Um, and, Father, I just pray that everybody would have abundance of everything they need. If they didn't have food in a certain time period when things get a little bit rough, that they would be able to multiply their food because they would get this. And they would be able to multiply the finances and protect themselves and be prepared for whatever. Because they hear your voice and they're led by you. So thank you, Father, for blessing the people that hear this video. Uh, and, and thank you, Father, for blessing anyone who buys the paintings. And I want, in Jesus' name, and I want to tell you guys that I pray over all my paintings. That my paintings would be a portal. That people would get saved, healed, and delivered, prosper, hear from God. That they would be a portal. Um, that when they look at my paintings, it would be like heaven on earth. It would be a portal for somebody to receive from God. So if you want to sneak and get somebody saved, you might want to get one of my paintings, take it home, pray over it, give it to them as a gift. Because you prayed over it, and I prayed over it. And I send the host with them, and that they would get saved, set free, and delivered in Jesus' name. So have a blessed day. Talk to you later.